Uh, McPhee is a uh, is a pal of ours and has been on the program on many occasions, and we talked to him a lot during the course of the uh, you know the preparation for uh, this coming season. And uh, you know he, what he told us and what what he has done has been all about the future, and we all applauded um, you know the the methodology of his selections and his trading. But this wasn't necessarily in the plan, I don't think. Um, I mean, obviously, your kids, the guys are playing well, but are you surprised by how well they're playing? Well, to be honest with you, Bob, I thought when, when we got the, the expansion draft, and when I seen the list of the players that we got in the expansion draft, uh, you know, I said, you know what, we got some good players here. We got some top six players in their lineup, and there's and there's guys pressing for top six minutes. So I like their group, and, uh, you know, that I think we're going to start 3-0, and oh, probably not, but uh, I like the competitive team that we got, and I like the, the bunch of characters, and I think there's some good hockey players there. So I'm pretty excited with our group, and I, I think they can be competitive all year long for sure. So a couple of years ago, you take uh, uh, Florida to uh, first place in their division, and then the next year, well, we all know what happened next year. It was a bit unfortunate, we think unfair. But then you get, a, a, I would have think, you could have sat back and said, okay, I'm going to wait for a, a situation where this time where I can go right in and win. You, you know, wait, for, wait. Instead, you jumped in on an expansion team. Why would you do that? Why did you think it was a good idea for you? Well, you know what? Probably two week, a week after I got let go in Florida, um, George and Kelly McCrimmon called me and asked me if I had any interest. And I said I definitely had some strong interests. I, I was with an expansion team in Columbus before. And, you know, you know you're going to get an opportunity to, to go in there and it's going to be all fresh and brand new. So I went down for the interview. We talked about it. And when I left there, I said to my wife, I said, you know what, I hope they offer me this job because I'm really keen on it. And why? I don't know. I just said, I guess when you're working with people like George and Kelly and the staff that they had down there, I was, I was excited about it. And they're good people. They told me what the plan was. And, uh, you know, I said, you know what, I can live with that plan and we'll go to work together and, and see what we can build. Did the city matter at all to you, Gerard, or or, or if they had been in uh, Paducah, Kentucky, would it have been the same? <laughs> I don't know. My wife decides where we go. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. We, we've been pretty fortunate. I mean, obviously being in Florida was a great place to be, but no, you know what? The city didn't matter to me. I, I, I'm a hockey guy, and I like to be, you know, being, being, being around the hockey team and that, so it didn't matter what city it was. It was just about, uh, you know, the opportunity that they showed, and then we, when we talked you know, when George, I, I interviewed, like I said, it was in early January, and then we stayed in touch for the next three months, three and a half months before he hired me. So it was it was good uh, back and forth, and we were talking all the time, once a week usually, and then, you know, when they offered me the contract, I was pretty excited with it. So it, it worked out real good, and it was something that, uh, like I said, uh, if, if something else were to come up, I was really keen on the Vegas thing, so it was good. So you said they told you what the plan was. As you know better than anybody, often the plan with an expansion team is be lousy for a few years because we need those high picks and those great young players. And you've seen what a team like Toronto has done by adding the talent they have by finishing low. So when they told you what the plan was, did the plan include let's be really competitive right away, even if it means we don't get a high draft pick? You know, they never told me the plan, to be honest with you. They had their meetings, and they were talking about, you know, obviously the future and the high draft picks and all that. But when they hired me and sat me down, they said, you know what, you're a coach, and we want you to win as many games as you can do. So go out there and, and do the best where you can with our team, make, them, make us competitive, and, uh, you know, your job is to win as many games as you can. So that's what exactly what I'm trying to do. I mean, I'm going in there every day trying to get a game plan ready to play and work hard and uh, – I'm not going to go in there and say, well, guys, we're, we're looking for a high draft pick next year. I'm going to go in there, do my job, and work hard. And there's nobody that goes into a game saying, oh, well, I hope we lose this game. So we got to play hard and work hard. And we know the way things work with the draft and everything. But uh, like I said, our job is to go out there and try and win every night, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah, Glant, that's all well and good. But here's the, here's the truth of the whole story here is they never expected you to win the first three games and be in first place after three games. Nobody did. Nobody did. So Except him. Yeah, they'll, t- <laughs> they'll tell you what, you know, dog, just do the best you can, and, and they expect you to, to lose 90% of your games. Uh, you're messing up the plan here by playing so good. But look, at, it's, it's, I'm wondering what you think. It, it's a rare thing uh, that an expansion team gets a world-class goaltender and you have one 
and by a series of circumstances, um, and you you got one of these guys. I, I mean, I know I don't remember St. Louis Blues in the first year had Glenn Hall and who was their other goaltender? Jacques Plante. and Jacques Plante. Yep. You know, maybe a little past their prime, but world class goaltenders of the time. Uh, you may have to go back that far in order to find somebody, that, uh, an expansion team that has a goaltender this good. What does he mean in terms of confidence, not just for you, but for your young players up front? Yeah, no, you know, we, we selected him in the expansion draft. Everybody knew that he was going to be a leader. He's a guy that comes in the dressing room every day. I don't know the guy. I, you know, I didn't know him very well till this year. And uh, he comes in every day smiling and laughing. He's like a 16-year-old kid. He enjoys his time at the rink. He has fun, and I think that rubs off on his teammates. You know, there's no, you don't come in here with a lot of pressure. You come in here to, to work hard, to make your team better, and I think he's a great leader for our group. I really do. A lot of, a lot of times when, and we've talked to other coaches about this, when, when you get fired in, in, in one place, it puts some doubt in your mind. Uh, you know, can I, was, it, was it me? Was I the reason? Can I coach at this level? Can I be successful at that level? How did you feel after you left Florida in that regard? Did it take you a while to get over it? No, you know what? I, I felt they did a good job. So when I left, it was different than when I left Columbus. When I left Columbus and got let go of there, that, that that was what I was guessing back then. Am I good enough to coach in this league? Okay. You know, am I, you know, you're a young coach. Are you good enough to coach in this league? But then when I got my second chance in Florida, I thought we did an outstanding job in Florida. I, I really liked my players there. That we had a good team. It was an up and coming team, and they just had a different philosophy. They wanted something different to run the ship and. So what what can you do? So I left I left Florida very confident and and you know fortunately I got some calls right away and 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 it worked out in Vegas. So you know it wasn't like uh, you know like I left Florida the same way I left Columbus. It wasn't that at all. So it was just about uh, hopefully things worked out and then uh, you know fortunately for me I got a call two weeks later and it, and it started the process of coming to Vegas. So it was good. Um. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention the tragedy that uh, befell uh, Vegas and that the um, really the entire world has been um, observing with shock. Um, and and it, it is fair to say that um, if you watch the opening of, uh, of last night uh, in Las Vegas, um, it was it's pretty hard to, to watch that and not get a tear in your eye or maybe more than a few. Um, the, the organization, uh, in my opinion, did a magnificent job in the decisions that they made into how to treat this, because there's no blueprint for this. There's no real right or wrong, but they took all the advertising off the boards, um, put Vegas strong on the mm -hmm. boards. Um, the, you know, everything that was done last night was, was just the right tone. What was your sense standing in the arena last night? Cause we, we didn't, we don't have that ability to, uh, to convey yeah. that. How did you feel? In you know what? Exactly what you just said. It was. It was. Everything was done properly. It was. Uh, it was. It was. You know, everybody felt a real tough time. I mean, I knew the day that we talked about it the day before the opening ceremonies, and they went over the script with us a little bit. And really, we were tearing up in the dressing room at that time. So it was tough. But then once you went on the ice, and I, I was on the ice with the you know the first responders, and that was real tough. But it was great. It was a great feeling. And then you, they come by, and everybody shook their hands. I think Derek Eglin's speech was unbelievable. Unbelievable, he did a great yeah. job and a fabulous job. You know, and that's not easy to do as a player coming out there and speaking to the fans like that. I thought he did an unbelievable job, and that really set the tone. And you know, we talked about it. You know, it wasn't about the hockey game last night. You know, and we talked about this the day before that last night was about uh, remembering and honoring, honoring the victims of the tragedy. And uh, I think that the organization did an unbelievable job doing that. Um. And England was the right guy to do this, wasn't he? And maybe you can explain why to those who aren't aware. Yeah, you, you know what? I I, uh, I thought he was the right guy. He's from Vegas. He's, he met yeah. his wife and his children are from Vegas, and he lives here in the off season. And when we selected him in the expansion draft, you know, we got him to be a character guy, and he's a good hockey player still, and, and he's a good person. So I think when the guy when they when the organization went to him, he was happy to do it, and I think he was definitely the right choice for sure. Yeah, he played minor hockey in uh, with the minor league team that was in Vegas for a while, and I think didn't he meet his isn't his wife a Las Vegan, and didn't he meet her there? Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it was a perfect choice. 